chapter 16 of Last of the Dragon Lords. For the next three days, the seven equines navigated their way through the thick forest that hung onto and around the mountains of Grand Sand Rains. Their eyes were as wide as saucers as they looked out for any openings in the rock faces they encountered during their walks. Their spirits lifted when they did find openings, only for them to drop like stones in the water when they revealed they were just caves. Oh please, if this is anything like Order of Rings, I know exactly what we need to do. We need to wait until the moon hits that right spot! Sometimes they would have to take shelter in these caves due to the storms that quickly came into rancid rains. They used that time to think of home and what their families were doing, and have some good laughs, some good times, and have a sing along. Wednesday, however, never joined in. With each passing day, they ended up with failure. The moon had become more and more somber. She would raise a smile every now and then, and a good memory they shared around, but her heart wasn't into singing. She was beginning to doubt herself of where she could find this key, or even if they could do it, would they still be able to defeat Heimdar? Twice theory on him using the sun to gain his powers put a lot into question. So it says, where is he hiding? And if he was using the sun to stay alive, how, if he's buried with thousands of thin under? It troubled her, in twilight to no end, and the two would stay up longer than the others, trying to think of what exactly he was waiting for. When Fluttershy asked the unicorn on him using the sun, so I theorized his connection to it was spiritual, rather than physical, meaning he didn't need to be within sight of it, just needed to be there. As for what he was waiting for, Fluttershy suggested he was waiting for another solar flare to occur, so he could ravage the plant without having to move. Twilight quickly set to the side, taking Ludacris down Celestia to control the sun. If he wanted to have full control of it again, he would have to kill the princess to get his power. Once he's miles away, it would be impossible for him to do so. Fireside accepted, albeit reluctantly. Since becoming a dragon lord, since becoming the bearer of one of the elements of harmony, so he had a change of view of what was impossible or not, and now thought nothing was impossible. On the fourth day, they emerged from the forest and arrived in Ramson Range proper, overlooking a vast array of mountains, hills, valleys, and lakes. They walked through the small streams and down the steep cliffs into an old abandoned village that was once inhabited by miners, or sort of throw a toll them all. It was going towards this village where Rarity made her genius know. Suppose! She began hesitantly, but stopped what she thought was a silly idea. No, go on, so I beckoned her. Where are we going to stay? That I was just thinking. Suppose that these miners had found this entrance. The question Rarity asked never really came to their minds. But when it did, they instantly understood what Rarity was getting at. Supposedly, I suppose, Thrust said with a shrug. The record they might have had a marker indicating where it could be. Rarity nodded. And possibly, I'm not as well. What do you all think? She so asked, looking to the others. The grins from Twilight and Flares, I said it all. You're a genius, Rarity. Flares, I commented. Rarity blushed for the compliment and waited to hoof modestly. Okay, Twilight said. I propose we split up into groups of two and three. Flares, I throw, Rarity, you go on one and cover that row of this village. She pointed to the road hanging right. Apple Second Me will cover the second row. She indicated with her head towards the row, right down the center of the village. Rainbow Pinky, you cover the third. Flares, you pointed to the world on the left, falling river. Okay, everyone, on it! They cried out in unison. They split up into their groups and went out looking for a map, or something that would give them an indication of where this place where the final key was. The village was very old. Very old. It was split up into three roads going from north to south, or south to north, depending on which way you came in. The houses that made the villas were mostly two stories high, and so were built out of wood. They were also ruins, since the roofs of most of them had broken through and destroyed the second, or even ground floors. The houses were placed in nice little rows along a thin concrete road, wide enough for four horses to walk across. On the right, a small river flowed gently behind one road, with Fluttershy made out now and then due to small alleys that split some of the houses apart. Fluttershy, Rarity, and Thrower walked down the roads towards the northern end of the village, I scanning the building for any sign of one that could be a headquarters to Myers Hughes. Thrower said he should be looking for a building that had three floors, maybe more, and probably out of bricks, rather than wood, like all the houses have been made out. So, Fluttershy, fella, what do you think of the name Dancer? Rarity said suddenly. 
Fraser shook her head and said, Oh, uh, I'm sorry, Rarity. Didn't hear what you said. Rarity looked back at her Pegasus friend with concern. You must have a lot on your mind. Oh, I do. Fraser agreed. I was just thinking about my animal friends back home. I was wondering if they're doing all right without me. I'm sure they're fine, Fraser said. If I could take care of them before, albeit not too well thinking about it, but I know he should be okay. Rarity said reassuringly. Fraser smiled. Okay, but what did you say before? Oh, yes, of course. I was wondering why his father thought the name dancer. Randy raised an eyebrow in confusion, then to turn and look at Thra, who had the same gormal look on his face. Oh, well, I guess. He said at the same time, but then he turned and laughed. <laughs> you go first, Flipshy. By saying I her thanks, I turned to face the unicorn, who was now looking back at your piece of looking at the answer. Well, it's a nice name, but why did you want a name? She said a little, I guess. <gasps> You're not pregnant, are you? Oh, goodness, no. Mary said, while she her hug. Thinking of a name for my sword here. She struck the bracelet around her right leg as if it was a small dog. She looked back to see the utmost confused look for Fluttershy, but a look of understanding for Thrilla. What? She is going to put see Fluttershy's face. I know you called your sword Drage Pain. So what could I call my sword something? My father called it Dragebane. It means Dragonbane or Draconic. I was wondering why he called it that. But now I know why. As it's done its purpose. I personally wouldn't have called it that. Or anything for that matter. It's a tool, not a thing. Well, I think it's a great name. Thrust said with a smile. The answer it should be. Ready, Grin. You see, Fluttershy. I think someone's got good taste in these. Come on, not so. We've got about the fine. She tried merrily in front of them, when he tried to explain. It's a horse can't tradition to name your sword for shy. My father used to say that if you had a sword, it'd be like naming and caring for a child. You could cradle in your hooves, or you would weep when it's broken or lost. And most of all, you would be proud of it, as it was by your side, and no one else was. Fireside's mouth hung open. She closed it again quickly, went to the ground. Think about what Thrawn just said. Well, when you put it that way. She went to the ground with the sword the Tsar had given her back into trots. The one spilled the blood of a remnant and a dragon that seemed like years ago. Contemplating the name it could give. I think I'm going to call this one Firewing, she declared after a while. In my father's memory, as well as knowing that if I have to use the sword again, when I have to press it to my chest, I know my father is close to my heart. Throw no approval. Do you have a name for your sword? Fires I asked. Not this one, no, he answered. My first sword I did, though. Named it after my wife. He stopped talking, bit his bottom lip, when he realized he said too much. You never said you had a wife? Fires I exclaimed, visibly shocked. Throw a load his hand and nodded. I met her in Castilian during a family visit. A beautiful creamy with brown mane and tail. Bright green eyes like sapphires. She was a giant of a mare, taller by me a half a foot. Thuluda was her name. When we first met, we didn't really like each other, though we had too many differences to get on. But over time, we touched a bit more, realized the things we didn't have in common were not important, but our personalities. We came to love each other, and much later got married with Freya's blessings. We moved away from the city and settled down in a village on the coast, far from the war. So we hoped. In time, one thing led to another, and I had a daughter. Clarice smiled. Must be nice to have children. She thought, what's your daughter's name? Her name was Nadra. Thor replied, tone quiet and seemingly sad. Where are they now? Thor's head sunk even slower, and he closed his eyes. Fireside felt her heart skip a beat when she saw tears in his eyes. I lost them when I lost my sword, he answered. Fireside placed a hoof over her mouth in horror. She could feel her own eyes begin to wire. I'm so sorry, Thor. I shouldn't have asked. No, it's okay. I kept it inside for too long. In fact, it was quite nice to tell someone other than Freya about it. So, thank you, Fireside. He continued telling her what happened next. Afterwards. I was broken, and I felt like I failed my family. 
Still do, really. So, as soon as I recovered from my injuries, I went to Castilian to take out the mark of Slayer. A Slayer? Why I stammering? Try nah. A Slayer is a horse who believes he has failed at something. So much so that he or she thinks he can never be forgiven. So they take out the mark of the Slayer and go out to the world to fight anything until he or she is killed. Only through death can a Slayer ever be truly forgiven. Firestar looked down with a mix of pity and disgust. She looked away and continued walking, eyes starting across houses to look what they were here for. Can you break off the mark of the Slayer and continue our normal life? She asked suddenly. Thor shook his head. Sometimes I wish I could, but I can't. Once you accepted the mark, there's no breaking it. Not until you die. Where does she be? Firestar growled. She fell silent once more and continued walking. She hated Thrower for wanting to go to his death because he believed he failed his wife and daughter. She wanted to tell him that there was no need to do that, no need to blame himself for her deaths, but she could see it would have been folly. Faye probably said the same thing to him over and over again, but still he didn't relent. She sighed sadly for Thrower and prayed it wouldn't be this bad he would fall in. Yes, you! Pinky said in a sing song voice. The two ponies were making up the way to the road to try and ask to go down. To the left was a wide but shallow river, to which Pinky could see a little fist floating for a moment before disappearing in a flash. To the right were ruined houses, much like the other ones in this dead, deserted place. Rainbow sighed wearily. Why do I have to be paired with Pinkie Pie? This is like the 50th question he's asked me already. Yeah, Pinky? You know you said a few days ago that if I felt flesh, I have a psychotic episode. You kissing? Rainbow's eyes wide in horror. Surely she isn't thinking. Oh, well, yeah, I think so anyway. Why? I never got that kiss yet. Pinky said, Darn it. Rainbow turned around to face Pinky with her eye. Look, Pinky, nothing against you or anything, but there's no way I'm kissing you. Pinky drew a brown lip. How about a quick friendly tuck on the cheek? I guess I might see that when he meets someone. There is no way I'm just Celestia's son now kissing you, Rebo said, surprised and annoyed by Pinky's persistence. Kissing a mare, or my friends for that mare, just isn't me. Pinky, but you promised, Pinky pouted. I didn't Pinky promise though, did I? Rebo Karen. When Pinky didn't reply, she congratulated herself and thought, turned to continue walking. Yes, he. Rebo thought down the urge to scream out what she was going to say. Yes, Pinky! She whispered, her foot on the farts of a growl. What's that building over there? Pinky was pointing to a large particular building that stood on a small block of land, where the river split up and went around it. It was three stories high, with tile wood with brick walls, surprisingly still in one piece. Wide wooden bridge tied the building and fills together. It was held by large wooden poles that dug into the riverbed. I think we found what we're looking for, Rainbow said with a grin. Is he selling? Pinky says she skipped over the bridge and towards the building. Rainbow galloped off after her. The two arrived at the door at the same moment. Pinky tried to get the door open with her hooves, but found it being locked. It's locked, Pinky stated. Not more of us longer. Stand aside, Rainbow says. She backed across the bridge, ready to charge it. Pinky stepped out of the way and watched as Rainbow lined herself up for a charge. Just when Rainbow was about to charge, Pinky giggled at herself as she remembered something. Oh, you silly, silly, Pinky. You push stars, not pull up. She quickly moved in front of the door. Pushed it open, leaving Rainbow to gal through the open door, smash it to a wall with a scream before she could put on the brakes. Pinky put a huff over her mouth in shock. The race didn't see the face this was okay. Yes, you. Are you alright? Rainbow was on the ground on a flat on her back, eyes spinning around her sockets. A large bruise where her head had met the wall. She shook her head, clearing her dizziness, and looked up at Pinky with nice her eyes. Pinky! What do you do that for? Pinky took a moment to control her laughter. Tell Rainbow back in her house. <laughs> Say, yes, just remember, you push doors, not pull up. Rainbow dusted herself off, shot Pinky another glare, as she turned around to look at the house. The interior was left untouched, as if the owners had just gone out for a morning stroll. There are a few large calluses, a large brick fireplace, flanked by soot, a smooth wooden floor, a large map of horse sky embedded on the wall above the fireplace and a door on the far side leading into another room. How did you know this place might be it? Pete Rainbow asked. 
，哎呦，没听一下去，没听一下曹金，没到了点儿啊，这里。Your piggy said told you that this place was the main headquarters. You're fine, guys. Sorry. First, it was my great time like saying. Then, I got to my left front line. He said, I'm right. He told me something in Tango was nearby. She fizzled with a massive grin. Uh-huh. Piggy, did I ever tell you you're so random? Piggy shrugged. Whatever. You go upstairs and look for the map up there. I'll stay here and look for it. Piggy gave a quick salute. She spun around on the spot like a soldier on parade, trod towards the stairs. Piggy, you realize I am a mayor, right? Piggy could go, <laughs> of course you are, silly. Some soldiers are just being a command, he said, sir, not me. Freeman blinked, stayed silent as Piggy skipped the stairs. Yep, uh, like I said, completely random, she muttered to herself, cleared her head on Pinky, the point being too hard to explain in the first place. Concentrate on the present. She scanned the room carefully, looking for anything that could help them all, and especially Fluttershy. She sighed sadly when she thought about her oldest friend. Although she seemed okay with the fact that that lived her and the others, so she told her that Fluttershy was anything but okay with that. She knew it would be hard on her Pegasus to watch her and her friends and loved ones grow old and eventually die. It was a cold hard fact, but true all the same. She hoped by death Fluttershy would have found new friends to be around. Friends that could be beside her when Rainbow does leave. No need to think about that yet, Rainbow. She bury yourself. You're only 18. You still got a lot of gifts to get. She made her way through the open door, led into the large room that looked like a deep breathing room, a large table in the center. She took to the air and hovered right above it, getting a face eye view of the whole map. On the map were about 20 different markings. Each was a large tower of some sort. A wheel on the top and a lot of cogs around the mill, except one. One was a mountain with scribbled lines below it. Rainbow grinned. Piggy! Rainbow called. Find the others and get over here quick! I think I found what we're looking for! Apple's and Twilight were plodding through the street that you chose to look through. Their eyes lighted in front of them as they made their way through the broken street. Like the others, this one looked like it had been bombarded with rocks. The houses were more broken for some reason than the others, and huge cracks broke up the path like an unfinished jigsaw puzzle. Well, you'll find kind of a clear twa, Alzac asked. An earthquake, most likely. The unicorn stopped to examine one of the storied houses. These houses were made entirely of wood. She stood on a piece of wood, and it broke at the slightest pressure on her hoof, and extremely brittle. These houses didn't stand a chance. Yeah, that's not interesting at all, but we got other mares. Namely, find and flourish that spooky dragon war plus. Applejack said, You're going to step away from a ruined building, and proceed to walk beside Applejack once more, as they continued their search. What do you think about that, anyway? About Fluttershy, I mean, Twilight queried. Applejack looked at the ground as so he thought about what Twilight just asked her. I don't really know what to think about, Twi. I'm like... See, Sora's the same pony, but the way she killed that dragon a few days back, it just wasn't her. Hey, to be fair, if she lost her father that day and did it to defend us, what would any of us have done if we were in her hoofs? But would she have done the same thing before she became a dragon lord? That was that cared. That's why I didn't know how to reply, so she stayed quiet. So she says a fair bit since we might, but now she's telling us dramatically. Not just the personality, but the body as well. And I'm worried about what my money. There's a sort of silence as Twilight began to understand what Applejack meant. You're scared of her, aren't you? Applejack gave Twilight an odd look. I ain't scared of her, Twilight. I'm scared for her. I'm scared she might do something she'll regret. Like what happened with Pinky and Rarity? Applejack physically said her. Possible. I still find it hard to believe those two about what Fluttershy said to them. I know. When they came to me about it, I thought it was ridiculous. But then I heard about what happened around town, and I couldn't believe it. What is the news, though? Who is it going to be the one to stop her? She does something like that again. You think she will? I was saying, not dolefully. I pray I'm wrong. I know some things seem to replace themselves, and this could lead to one. I hope you're wrong also, Twilight replied. Two points ears twist when he heard Pinky's voice call out their knees. Over here, Pinky! Twilight counted out. 
A few moments later, Pinky emerged, but not alone. With her were Fluttershy, Rarity, and Thrall, all of Hugh's grins on their faces. Let's go along! He was actually found something! Pinky said excitedly. He didn't say what or where or how, but something! It's just like, come on! As he picked up the five in coins to follow her to the house, where Rainbow was waiting. After crossing the bridge and entering the building, he found Rainbow Dash sitting on a large table with a smug grin on her face. Wings extended in outright excitement. I found porn! So girls, am I a genius or am I a genius? And you too, Pinky, since you brought us both here. So yeah, upon seeing Pinky's glare. The first step forward I took a look at the map, scrutinizing it for every detail. Fluttershy and Twilight stood beside him, having to stand on their hind legs and rest their forehoes on the table so they could see the map as well. Well, this is definitely what we're looking for. Thanks, Rainbow, Twilight said. Fluttershy looked up and gave Rainbow a look of gratitude. There was one thing that cut my eyeball away for you, Slipugs, Rainbow said. She took to the air and hovered above Thrawa. Rainbow, I can't concentrate while you're flapping above me with your wings like that, Thrawa said acidly. Rainbow cried sleepishly. Hell, sorry. As he sat down opposite Thrawa, she pointed to the picture in the mountain. I saw this one was the only one that looked different to the others, and I wanted to know what that scribbly line but that way it meant. Thrawa looked at where Rainbow was pointing, and his eyebrows rose in surprise. But to be honest, I wasn't expecting something so quickly. That there is the horse game language. It says, identified. Could this be what we're looking for? Twice said excitedly. She glanced over at Fluttershy and saw her confusion. The Pegasus didn't look as happy as the unicorn thought she would be. I think so. There may be a chance it's nothing. But give me a moment and I'll map out the route where you need to go. Throw it to the map and began looking at the roads. Twilight, meanwhile, put Fluttershy to one side. I thought you'd be happy about this, since this is what we're looking for. Oh, I know. And believe me, I am happy we may have finally found it, but... But what? They found it. They may have broken into the chamber and... Taking the key, Twilight fans for her. Fluttershy nodded. Now the feeling of worry was creeping through her once again. If they did find the key and take it, they wouldn't be able to find it. So the whole room world was doomed to burn. The very idea of the world burning didn't sit well for Twilight, nor did it for anyone. In the end, Twilight gave her a comforting smile. I think we should worry about that when we get there. Plus, with Thrall as our guide, we'll be able to find that key, even if it means going to the ends of this country. First, I opened her mouth to speak. The stop was she turned her head, and Thrall pulled away from the map. Right. If I got my bearings correct, we should be here. He pointed to a small black dot that lay on the bottom right corner of the map. The six mares surrounded the horse as he trailed the route they needed to take. You see, this, he pointed to a small purple line running from the main road, was was lying in a thick black towards the spot. It's an old goat path, the inhabitants of this place. It used to take hundreds of years ago. The horde of horse guns stole them out, that is. It breaks off from the main road about a mile or so. That makes its way up and over this mountain. He pointed to and around a large spear shaped mountain. And then finally to here. He pointed to the unknown location. How long do you think it'll take us to get there, Jala? Fresh asked. Desperate to be there as soon as possible. Thor simply shrugged. I also don't know. But judging from the distance between it and us, I'll say about half a day. Maybe longer, maybe shorter. Fresh I nodded. Although she didn't bother to hide her feelings in her eyes. They all knew she wanted to be there. Get it? And get out as quick as possible. Well then, she said silently, breaking the silence. Guess we better get moving. We got a lot of ground to cover before nightfall. The others nodded in agreement, and after rolling up the map and taking any good food that was left in the house, they fled out of the place and made their way back to the village. Above them, a large formation of clouds moved their way over them. Blocking out the sun, making the rather warm day slightly chillier. Hey, Bo, Fluttershy, what's your really big deal? So go up there and tell those clouds to go away. I'm getting cold, cold here. Fanny whined. Fluttershy and Rainbow looked at each other for a moment, then nodded. Give us a sec, Rarity! Rainbow said, a sea of Fluttershy soared into the air. They disappeared into the gray clouds, and soon were dispersing the formation away from the sun, bringing the warm summer feeling back down to them. 
Take a side roll, guys! Woo! Throw a shot, hunt from his mouth. How, how, how are they doing that? Take a side, can manipulate cops. Fire side explains she touched back down. I don't normally do it, but sometimes I like giving a little pat of rain for my frog friends to send the box back down. Rain knows more of the expert. You should ask her. When Rainbow explained to throw her how Fake Side controlled clouds, they parted from the villas and made their way along the thin mud road that warmed its way around the trees and made up the rains. After about an hour, they arrived at a tea junction, where a thin, overgrown road disappeared into the woods heading towards the mountains. I must complain for rarity. See, you got it right this time. It's not whining, it's complaining. They made their way back to the thick bush, guided by Twilight's illumination spell. And throw a sword kind of thicker foliage. An hour or so later, they left the darkening forest and were now heading uphill. The mountains around them were covered in a light green, and soft grass that covered them, and were distanced from each other to make it easier to navigate. They stopped at a small waterfall where a couple of otters resided for a quick break and lunch and wasps. Flesh and wasps them with interest as they caught their meals and ate them greedily. She looked up from the yard as was mesmerized by the natural beauty around her. Behind them was the forest stretching out towards the road, while a mountain, seemed like a wall, ran across the horizon. She could make out with her eyesight and an edge of a river sneak its way around the woods. She figured it was the river the stream was connected to. In front of them was a long uphill climb with what seemed like iron towers burrowing up from the ground. Those are mining lifts, Dara explained upon noticing what fire she was looking at. They were built to carry whatever they found down there to the main base was, to make their way back up to be reloaded. After in half an hour or so, bound to Dooley, practicing with swords and crossbows, they continued on their way up to the old path. They saw some of the towers that collapsed from metal thieves, so did they imagine, were rusting away from being left out there in a rather cold and lonely place. The higher they got, the chillier it got. Soon all the equines' coasts were standing on end keeping them warm to some degree. By the time the sun was descending from the sky, they made it to the top of one of the tallest mountains and had one of the very good views around the area. As he was flared his eyes, whining in excitement and hope. To the northeast of the mountain, he stood was a larger mountain that seemed to be the shape of a ram's head. Rocks resting at the edge, forming the horns, and was arched to roughly resemble a head looking towards the sky. Flareside brought out the map of her father's sales bags and spread it out, looking up from time to time to see if he got the bearing right. She grinned when she saw it was a deep correct. You need to go towards that mountain there, she said, pointing towards the ram's head. You sure, Flareside? Applesack asked, looking towards where the sun was set. The sun's going now awful quick, so we need to make some shelter before it goes completely. I think so, Applejack. She looked to where the sun was setting, and was surprised to see it begin to disappear over the horizons. Follow me, please. She was pl as asked pleasantly to the others, trying back down to the mountain towards the ram's head. The others followed quickly as Flareside took the lead. By the time the sun was halfway over the horizon, they arrived under its shadow. They had took Vegas far away, but now they were below it. It was huge and quite intimidating. They found another goat path and followed her as rather than way around the mountain's base. Halfway around, they discovered to their horror the path hugged the legs of the mountain. On the right side, it sent a sheer drop to some rocks below. How the hell did the horses manage to find this place? Pinky exclaimed. We are sure footed as this ghost, Pinky, Thor replied. But, just to be safe, Twilight muttered. She turned to the two pig side of the group. Rainbow, Fluttershy, stay inside of us and make sure no pony falls off. We don't want any accidents, Twilight instructed them. They cough for Thor made her quickly yet. Oh, and make sure no po horse falls off also. Where's that rainbow dash hovered the castle? Lincoln's equines literally hugged the mountainside as they moved cautiously on the narrow path. Sit! Twa! Upset called to the unicorn. Do you know any spells that Billy Chase our appearance last say, turtles with the goats? Well, it's easier to get around this darn rock. So I took a f- Oh, how much fun that would be. So she said to herself. Sorry, Applesack, I don't. This wasn't written after season four, you know. I'll have a look at the transfer rankings spiels when we get back, if you like. Also, maybe some polymorph. I was thinking it was only an here, really. Perfectly fast point, fuck yeah.
Applesack said, hoping not to be the test subject of one Tyler's experiments. She suddenly lost balance for a sec, and with belief she would soon be falling to her death. Or she could fall, Rainbow put a huff onto her back and pressed her against the wall. <laughs> Thanks, Rainbow. Applesack brings bring a sigh of relief. So what I'm here for! Rainbow said with a grin. Not only Applesack would be safe, she let go of her back with a casting distance of anyone else. First, I flew slightly ahead to see whether the path got any narrower or wider. She was relieved when she saw it was the latter. Girls, the path leads to the mountain not too far ahead of us, she said to them as they rounded the bend. Soon they were free of the chasm and back between solid rocks, with a cut path right through the middle leading directly to the mountain. First, I was right up front, her wings stretched out trembling. She so knowing her nervous excitement, she followed the path into the large open area. No square shape, when the mountain's forming an impenetrable wall around it. Well, there's a wall in front of them that truly astounded the Dragon Lord. A huge arch, shaped like two wingless strangles with their claws locked out to each other. Behind the arch was a huge stone door carved into the mountain, with symbol of the Dragon Lords carved upon it. Before the door, marked into a path were about six pillars, each were girl in the shape of a wingless dragon sitting on top of it, and all of them facing seven equines as they entered. Firesight's grin was as wide as herself. They had found it. We did it, girls, we did it! She so walked for joy, hopping on the spot. Here's the reply. They were too much in awe, completely fascinated by the architecture of the Dragon Lords. Rainbow flew up, and was wanted to grotesque, and I did out of curiosity. These guys knew how to sculpt, didn't they? She so poked one to be sure it wouldn't wake up, and attacked them all suddenly. I was going to do that myself when I first saw the one else, Firesight said. Join the Pegasus friend. I was too afraid to even go near one. Well, you are nearly afraid of everything. Fable said with a teasing grin. First, I afraid of fence. I'm not afraid of everything. No, you're afraid of nearly everything. There's a difference, Rainbow said. So, what do we do now? Pinky asked. First, I looked at each member of the group. She didn't need good eyesight to see how tired they all were. Brady even looked like she was about to collapse. If I decided we were alone with her father, she would have gone straight away. But now she had to look after her friends, and look after their well-being. They were with her, after all, because of her. I think we should sail down here for the night, then head in the dawn. She looked at the door, always trying to get in. With that cell, the equines built a small fire, a slight silence looking for the door. And the grotesque looking down upon them.